Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Programming. Kevin here, and wow, it has been a phenomenal week uh, for space this week. Obviously, SpaceX has done something rather weird. Uh, they sent up a rocket, and then part of the rocket decided not to go to space, and instead decided to come down and land on a robot boat. Because robot boats are a thing. We are living in the future. This is an amazing time to be alive. Um, uh, obviously, so the SpaceX first stage uh, basically went, killed all most of its lateral velocity to bring itself down onto a ballistic trajectory that landed it back in the Atlantic Ocean on top of a drone ship, which is absolutely insane. They tried this multiple times. They finally managed to stick the landing. And wow, uh, I got to watch the the stream live and it was just it was insane i mean obviously we've done sort of similar i mean we no we haven't done similar stuff in this series at all uh we have tried to do suicide burns in the past with very limited success and we don't aim for a particular landing site we just go let's hope there's some ground where, where we land um and if you watch the stream the thing is coming in at a pretty crazy angle, because um, it's angled against some some very heavy winds, and so it's it's moving laterally. I, I just I I can't even. It is a uh, it is a remarkable achievement, and congrats to everybody involved with that team. Today, we're not going to land on a barge because even inside Kerbal Space Program, that is ridiculously challenging. Though I believe a couple of people may have may have pulled it off. Um, I believe in, with uh, with with KOS even. Um, today, no, we are finally pulling together a whole bunch of scripts that we've been working on. Basically, the last, I don't know, maybe six episodes of work that we've been doing is finally culminating into a single uh, mission launch. So, obviously, we've got this Project Athena, which is to land on Minmus and come back. And uh, the Minmus team has decided, you know, let's, uh, let's maybe instead look at, like, the moon for a simple reason. And that is that when we're trying to plan Minmus transfers... Unless we want to spend the fuel to uh, to do an inclination match, it's very difficult to get an encounter outside of near the uh, places where the where the orbits intersect. And there's this obnoxious thing called the moon that, for this entire for the last twelve hours, has just insisted on getting in the way of any of those uh, of any of those <laughs> launch windows or transfer windows and so you know we said okay fine you know what the moon like basically we, we keep trying to find these great maneuvers out toward minmus and we said all right and the moon keeps interrupting and saying hey i like rockets and noms up all of our maneuver nodes so fine okay we're gonna go to the moon first that's gonna be uh, that's going to be our first goal, which is going to make landing a little more difficult. Minimus is a lot, obviously a lot more forgiving, but so today we are launching the first of probably three craft. This is uh, Herald One, uh, Herald with an E, because it is heralding our imminent arrival. So the idea here is that we are running a single script that has no intervention. We're not uploading multiple things. You can see there is no connection. Uh, it, this, this, uh, this craft does have uh, radio transmitters, but we're not going to use them for any of this mission. This is literally, I, I put it on the launch pad and then I messed around with, uh, you know, switching in and out of map view <laughs> to, so we could see what it was doing. Um, but the idea is that we're going to go ahead and just get ourselves into a good stable orbit around the moon. And once we can do that, we can use this to test out future scripts to say, all right, that transfer script that we were working on, can we use it to get back from the moon to Kerbin? Because that's not something, obviously we've had, we have a bunch of things that are parked in low Kerbin orbit that we can use to say, hey, I need to test this thing. Can I transfer to somewhere else? We don't really have, we have one, uh, one craft that is in orbit around Minimus, a little iffy. Um, it's on a very, very eccentric orbit, but we're gonna put this thing in around the moon. And it's also gonna serve as kind of our first relay satellite, because hey, why not? I mean, if we're sending something out there anyway. So what we're actually launching with right here is the ascent profile that we got from running that week-long series of genetic algorithms. You see, we're starting to heat up. Um, we've got a great, wonderful trajectory, and oh man, look at that. That's so much better than I can ever manually fly stuff. We're already uh, getting ourselves up to our target apoapsis of 100 kilometers, and as soon as we hit that, then the engines are going to cut out, and 
we look back. There we go. Okay, so we've cut out. Still getting a lot of that uh, re-entry heating, but we are climbing very, very rapidly. Now, I did... Uh, the, we had a couple of, of examples from the from the genetic algorithm stuff that pulled out the best large descent profiles. What I discovered in looking at kind of the later generations is that most of them said uh, we we had one thing that was setting the the heading and one thing that was setting the throttle. Most of them said let's go full throttle. They said like let's cap the thrust to weight ratio at something like eight, um, which we were never hitting. And so all right, I you know I put it in there. Let's go ahead and cap it at eight. But I think realistically, what it means is that uh, at least for the test craft that we were running, um, which never had a thrust to weight ratio of greater than eight. And I can't imagine cases where that would be the case. Uh, yeah, we, it's, I mean, basically the idea is go full throttle. There's not a huge benefit to throttling back and trying to maintain a constant thrust to weight ratio, at least with the ascent profile that it converged on. It could be that if we let the thing run for a year. Anyway, we have just exited the atmosphere. And so this brings to the second thing that uh, pulling out some information from stuff we were working on last time, which is setting up uh, maneuver nodes just kind of automatically. What that did just there uh, was uh, we set a maneuver node. We said, we're going to have a maneuver node at Apoapsis. And then we said, let's do some hill climbing. Let's find a prograde delta V that makes our orbit uh, less eccentric and try and find the the, the correct amount of delta V such that we have the least eccentric orbit using a step size of, I think, one. Uh, actually, no, sorry, in this case, we actually did this multiple times. So I said, first, go ahead and step around, add or subtract 10. Or no, I said like 100. And then go ahead and add or subtract 10. And then go ahead and add or subtract one. So we didn't have to count all the way up because I think this is, what, 700 something at delta V? Um, so, you know, basically we're just slowly narrowing in on what the right amount of delta V is, and it went ahead and gave it to us. So now we have that maneuver just sitting there. And uh, one of the problems, though, with this craft, which I didn't realize until kind of way too late, I was, I was debugging and trying to figure out what's going on with the maneuver script. The maneuver script, uh, obviously, we have, we've had a, a script for executing maneuver notes for a long time. I've gone ahead and tweaked it a little bit, trying to make it more like our existing libraries. But I was trying to figure out what was going on because this thing just wasn't aiming at the darn node. Finally, I realized this thing has pretty much no steering. Um, it's using the the LV30 engine, which doesn't which doesn't steer, and there's a dinky probe core at the top of it, and that's a big rocket. Uh, it's got fins, which are really really great in space, uh, but yeah. So uh, it is taking the better part of maybe two minutes to try and get itself uh, onto that uh, target marker. And even then, once we start firing, uh, the target marker is going to go off in some various direction. And <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we're not going to we're not going to get this maneuver exactly right. But thankfully, uh, this stage is going to be uh, discarded once we've gone ahead and circularized. Um, I need to get I probably need to be better about clearing out uh, clearing out some of the debris because we haven't necessarily been good about trying to trying to stage such that these uh, launch stages end up pushing us back. I also m debated putting uh, a fairing on here. Um, I was, it probably would have made more sense, but I was a little concerned about the, about the weight. Uh, I was looking at trying to manage the Delta V. I think the first stage has 4,000 Delta V and I've obviously run this a couple of times. Um, we've, we've generally ended up with probably a margin of 200 so we're using like 3,800 meters a second at delta V. Um, I, I think theoretically you can get it down to something like 3,300-ish. Uh, but hey, it's 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 far better than I can fly manually running the way that it's currently going. Um, but yeah, I think we're coming up on. We should be firing soon. Where are we? Noden. Um. Dip, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's let us go. We are going to. Uh, circularize, and then as soon as we circularize, then we're going to kick in our transfer library, which is going to do that same hill climbing technique. And this has been updated. What I've done is I've said, okay, first do that thing that we were doing before. We were saying just try and find a transfer based on whatever the closest approach is between the thing we're transferring to and our ship. But I've also said, okay, once you've done that, then go ahead and refine it based on the inclination and then go ahead and refine it based on the periapsis. So, okay, we've gone ahead and 
ditched that first stage, which leaves our very tiny little probe, which is wonderful. But you see, we have a fairly reasonable orbit, even though we ended up drifting fairly far away from the target marker for lack of the ability to steer. Um, and you can see that now we're going ahead and playing around trying to get ourselves uh, <laughs> just, just jiggling about trying to work our way up to uh, the moon. And you see uh, this, uh, this algorithm, so we're using the same step size, uh, which was pointed out uh, about the last video, is that we're saying, you know, plus or minus, uh, we were using 10 delta V, I think now we're using 20, uh, you know, 20 delta V, but we're also saying plus or minus 20 seconds um, that you can tweak those. And maybe the step sizes should be different for those. It's a little bit more of a pain to code, and this thing seems to work reasonably well. Um, but I think as you'll see here, I'm trying to remember exactly which run through this was because, oh my goodness, there were a lot of these. Uh, I was trying to refine out the actual code for this stuff. Um, but you'll see that this thing kind of gets a little bit stuck. Um, and that's sort of expected. Um, one of the things is that we're relying on that sort of closest approach uh, estimate. It's not always going to be perfect. Um, even the, the underlying code that estimates uh, the position at a particular time is not entirely perfect. And so what actually happens here is this thing will give up um, if it can't find something uh, that has an encounter. But then it'll go ahead and say, okay, well, we'll go ahead and try again, but add an additional 10 minutes to our start time. Um, because it does tend to seem to want to adjust the, the delta V in the direction much more than the start time. So it's going to go ahead and it'll do this. And this also helps with the issue of the moon getting in the way of transferring to minimus. We go, okay, we give up. We couldn't find a way to get there. We got stuck in some sort of local optimal state where we moving in any direction was a worse option. And so we'll go ahead and just wait another 10 minutes and try to find again. And eventually, you know, you'd find some way, look, three, three days later, the moon is out of the way and we have a perfect encounter. And there we see, okay, so we've now caught it. And now it has moved on, so it's got two refining steps. One of them is just getting our eccentricity correct. We're trying to have a zero eccentricity, and because uh, we don't want to come in, in in a sort of a retrograde orbit. And then it's going to go ahead and try and refine our periapsis. We've targeted 40 kilometers. We'll see. Let's see how it does. 30, 39,954, if, if I'm reading that correctly. That's, that's pretty cool. I am a fan of hill climbing. This is working out incredibly well. Very, very exciting. Um, so now, of course, I haven't had to, I haven't had to do anything. This is wonderful. Uh, I just, you know, put the thing on the launch pad and let it do its stuff. It's time warping ahead now to this maneuver. Um, and at least this time it'll be able to, uh, it'll be able to, yeah, you see it's, it's rotating and it's finding, uh, its target marker. And what, is that more debris? We've got, a, we've got a lot of debris in low carbon orbit. I really need to clean that stuff up. Um, but yeah, so this is just a very, very simple probe. Um, it's not intending to do much. Um, I think we'll, we'll, next have, we'll probably have one after this that will land. Uh, you see, oh, beautiful. The moon just coming up there over the horizon. You see the, our launch stage is out in front of us. <laughs> just kind of drifting away. Um, I hope we don't... Run it well. I, I'm obviously recording this after the fact, so you know that would just be uh, fake uh, anticipation or fake fear, I guess, on my part. <laughs> um, but I think after this, we'll probably send, uh, we'll probably target uh, another ship that will transfer out and land, uh, kind of in in one shot. Um, and at which point, then we'll be ready for our third one, which will land and come back. So we will want to use this ship to test out various scripts to say how you know can we target a particular landing site like spacex did <laughs> um though you know probably not quite as accurately we'll, we'll do our best um and can we get ourselves back from the moon uh once once we've done that um, so we can test out those things and that'll be great because then we'll we'll have everything completely done obviously we can do some suicide burn test stuff um on kerbin but as far as trying to plan uh transfers from you know from a, from a satellite to the main body that's not something you can really test from Kerman um, there's just no way for us to really do that so okay we're bringing this thing up the one thing that I discovered is that uh, our hill climbing for figuring out the maneuvers is actually better than the executing of the maneuvers um, 
we I, I'm we it's probably the maneuver library is pretty old uh, for this series. It's probably something worth going back and reviewing. Um, so yeah, we had we had pretty much exactly forty kilometers before, and now we've got two hundred kilometers. So you know, we had we were able to come up with a very great plan, and we just just didn't execute it incredibly well. But there we go. We are saying goodbye to the bonds of Kerbin. Uh, goodbye to the bonds of Kerbin. There you go. Um, and drifting our way off lazily toward the moon. Man, I gotta say, I, I am really enjoying having like this, this, just put it on the launch pad and, and then go. This is, there. so many of our scripts before have just been, all right, let's do this one thing and now shoot, let's, we've got to write stuff and debug stuff and quick save <laughs> secretly and come back and try and get uh, these individual steps. Now we just have like this, hey, We've got these libraries. We say, go ahead and run it and gun it. This library is also using our um, our mission scripts. So we've just defined a bunch of functions that this is the series of mission steps. Go ahead and do all of those. So I actually had one case where I accidentally switched to another craft. I came back and it was totally fine. It was, it was, it, it was, <laughs> this was before it is circularized. I came back and I was like, oh yeah, fine. I'm not going to crash into Kerbin. I, I know, I know how to recover from this. This is great. Um, one thing I did encounter, though, and if you do a lot of stuff with maneuver nodes, or particularly testing the orbits of maneuver nodes, is that if you are looking for those orbits, you may want to add an artificial delay, uh, because occasionally if you add a node to the flight path and then you try and check the orbit, it won't be completely accurate. Or if you say, does it transfer to, does it have a, a next orbital patch that won't necessarily be updated until the next physics sticks. So that's something to keep in mind. I do plan on going through all of this code, um, but I am going to be away uh, at a conference next week. And so I figured I'd probably walk through the code in kind of a bonus video for next week because I'll be gone for that. But there we go. The last step in our mission is to go ahead and create another maneuver to circularize. I like doing this. I, I think let's, let's add maneuvers anytime that we're going to do a thing. And then have the maneuver be in charge of, or have our maneuver library be in charge of actually executing anything. So we never have these whole lock the throttle to this thing and kind of hacky ways of doing stuff. And we're just going ahead, waiting for a circularization burn. We've still got, you know, plenty of fuel, plenty of delta V. I think this upper stage is something like 1,200, 1,300 meters a second in delta V. So plenty, plenty, plenty for us. Probably not, well, I don't know, maybe enough to get back. That'd be interesting to, that'd be interesting to test. Didn't. Didn't really come up, didn't occur to me, but hey, that could be fun. But yes, okay. So we're, we're, what was I saying before? All right. Yeah, we've got the solar panels. That's the other thing is that we've got, because this thing does have uh, the dish antenna, man, it is hard to build tiny probes when you need to have an awful lot of battery. Um, granted, I was planning for a 40 kilometer orbit, so that meant we needed to have uh, battery power for something like 15 minutes of... Uh, of uh, 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 darkness, yeah, darkness time, which you know is is in a, it's at a drain of like one per second, you know, it adds up. So, anyway, there we go. We have now this uh, obviously not particularly, uh, it's it you know not not a particularly equatorial orbit, and not a periapsis that we wanted. But that's simply a matter of our maneuver didn't execute correctly. We did manage to get ourselves into a really great orbit and we had a great maneuver plan so i'm very excited to see where we can go with this can i get both of these in the i can't get both of these in the shot uh, but yes we will have to go ahead and continue on with this mission really really excited and uh looking forward to going through a lot of the code and stuff with you next week and advancing our space program in future episodes so i will hope to see you then cheers